Hi there, my fellow mainframers and computer performance analysts. Today we are going to do an analysis and tuning exercise. In particular, we're going to tune the CP enable parameter of the IEA OPT member of PalmLib. Now, if you've not looked at this parameter in a while, or maybe you've upgraded to a new processor recently, or maybe you just want to learn more about ZOS and this particular performance parameter in general, then get ready to roll up your sleeves because we're going to get some work done today. Now this video is part one of a two-part series. Hi there, I am Peter Enrico of Enterprise Performance Strategies. My team and I are here to help you get great workload performance while optimizing the usage of your system resources in the mainframe environment. Our education and our software are geared towards helping you get better performance results and faster. We created the Mainframe Performance Channel to help you do what we do. Now, if you're new here, click that subscribe button, and any of the references I give in the video, I'll be sure to link in the references below. So let's get into it. As I said, today I want to take you through an analysis and tuning exercise of the Mainframe ZOS parameter named CP Enable. We will do this in four steps. Step one is to learn some background that will help us during this analysis and tuning exercise. That is, I will tell you more about the CP enable parameter and about something called IO interrupt processing. Step two is to learn the current CP enable parameter settings of your ZOS systems. I will tell you where to find this parameter and I will tell you about some of the more popular parameter settings. Step three is to learn about some relevant measurements and how to evaluate those measurements. To do this, I will show you some sample reports. And step four is tune. I will provide you with some tuning and analysis guidelines so that you can tune this parameter in your environment. Now, I should point out that this is a ZOS system parameter, so remember that this analysis exercise needs to be done on each one of your ZOS systems. So now, let's get to it. As I said, step one is to learn about the CP enable parameter and IO interrupt processing. What is the CP enable parameter? At its core, the CP enable parameter is used to influence the number of logical processors that a ZOS operating system enables for IO interrupt processing. Okay, there was a lot said in that statement, so let's break it down a bit. The CP enable parameter is what's known as a resource optimization parameter because the algorithm behind this parameter is used to control the number of logical processors assigned by a ZOS operating system to handle the IO interrupts. The reason this parameter needs to be tuned is that architectural changes to the IBM mainframe processors sometimes result in the need for this parameter to regularly be revisited. So as I said before, if you've not examined this parameter recently, then after this video, I strongly encourage you to do so. Now let's touch on the subject of IO interrupts. On the ZOS operating system, there are all sorts of uh, interrupts. What is an interrupt? At its core, an interrupt is some event on the operating system that alters the processing sequence of instructions. On ZOS, there are different types of interrupts. For example, you may have heard of uh, program interrupts, supervisor and SVC interrupts, uh, machine interrupts, there are IO interrupts, and the last one that I can remember is external interrupts. Um, there may be others. Um, so look, uh, many interrupts are specifically requested by programs, but many others are unplanned and are due to some sort of event that happens. It's this event that needs to be handled. For now, just know an interrupt is something that happens which causes the operating system to try to stop what it's doing so we can handle that interrupt. Um, I guess this is why it's called an interrupt. Um, anyway, I digress. So as I said, one such interrupt is an IO interrupt. Um, now, an IO interrupt IO interrupts is not my area of expertise, but as you can imagine, IOs take so much longer to execute and complete than other types of processing on the operating system. So the general attitude is when the channel subsystem attempts to interrupt uh, to signal, signal the completion of an IO, a system's logical processor needs to be made available to handle that interrupt. Um, this needs to be done even if all the CPUs may be busy with some sort of regular unit of work. 
the general thought is, is that it's probably better to stop whatever work is being done um, and, and or in flight and handle that IO interrupts just to get the IO to the next phase of its processing. And now here is a thought I want you to ponder. On a multiple CPU ZOS system, is it better to allow all the logical processors to be enabled for IO interrupts, or is it better to concentrate the IO interrupt processing on a smaller subset of logical processors? For example, uh, say we have a system with five logical processors. Is it better to spread the IOs across all five processors or to concentrate the IO interrupts on a subset of those logical processors, a fewer set? Now, I should point out, when a CPU is interrupted to handle a different sequence of instructions, there is a disruption of the processor caches and the processing flows of the transaction. Um, disruption of the processor caches results in cycles of the machine that are now being spent to resolve the cache misses, which in turn could result in fewer instructions or fewer cycles um, of the machine available to process the workloads. This effectively drives down the capacity in the MIPS of the processor environment. And this is where the CP enable parameter comes in. What the CP enable parameter does is influence an algorithm in the operating system that enables the minimum number of logical processors for a system to handle the IO interrupts. This way, only a minimum number of logical processors would then be interrupted for IO interrupt processing. Now, like most parameters, there will be trade-offs and trade-off decisions you will need to take into consideration. You want to have the operating system enable the minimum number of processors to handle the I.O. interrupts to avoid I.O. delays, but not too many CPUs to drive down the efficiency of the capacity of the processing environment. It's up to you to help the ZOS operating system find out the right balance. So that is what the CP enable parameter is about at its core. Now for step two. As a reminder, step two is you want to learn your current CP enable parameter settings. To find your CP enable parameters, go to the system's IEA OPT member of your system parameters. This is typically in sys1.palmwide. Um, if you do not see the parameters specified in this member, then it means that you're using the system default. Here is the syntax of the parameter. The syntax is CP enable equals X comma Y, where both X and Y are percentage values. X is a low threshold value and Y is a high threshold value for the percentage of IO interrupts to be processed through test pending interrupt instruction path in the iOS component of the ZOS operating system. Test pending interrupt is known as TC TPI processing. Um, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. The SRM component of the operating system regularly monitors the percentage of IO interrupts through this test pending interrupt. The algorithm basically works out to say if more than Y percentage of the IO interrupts are delayed, then enable another CPU for IO interrupts. Then if less than X percentage of the IO interrupts are delayed, then disable a CPU from handling IO interrupts. This way, as the IO activity and TPI go uh, up and down, more and fewer processes will be enabled for IO interrupts. So did you find how your uh, how this parameter is set on your system? Um, if so, I want to explain. At the time of this video, there are four interesting settings of this parameter, and one of these should be the parameter that you are using now. The four are as follows. CP enable equals 0, 0, CP enable equals 10, 30, CP enable equals 5, 15, and CP enable equals some custom X and custom Y for each of your L parts. The first setting I want to talk about here is the CP enable equals 0, 0 setting. And at the time of this video, this is the default value. The 0, 0 setting 
basically translates to enable all the logical processes of a system to uh, be enabled for IO interrupt processing. This is not a recommended value for the processes on the market at the time of this video, which is the year 2020. So if you have not, um, if you do not have this parameter specified and the default value when you're watching this video is zero comma zero, then I strongly encourage you to specify, uh, to specify and tune this parameter. The second setting that is common is the CP enable equals 10 comma 30. And this is a setting for all IBM mainframe generation processors from the Z13 or the Z13 and earlier back to the mid 1990s. The way you read this parameter is if more than 30% of the IOs are delayed for IO interrupt processing, then enable another logical processor for IO interrupts. And if less than 10% of the IOs are delayed for interrupt processing, then disable the logical processor for IO interrupts. This in turn is going to cause the number of system logical processors to be enabled for IO interrupt processing on, uh, on, based on, depending upon the uh, IO delays and the IO interrupt processing to go up and down. Again, remember the key point is to always uh, make sure you have the minimum number enabled for IO interrupt processing to run the system effectively. The third setting that is becoming more common is CP enable 5 comma 15. And this is the recommended value for the latest generation of IBM mainframe processors at the time of this video. And these are the Z14 and the Z15 processors. My guess is that this will also be a recommended value for the next few generations of the processors to come. So again, the way you read this is if more than 15% of the IOs are delayed for IO interrupt processing, then enable another logical processor. And if less than 5% are, are uh, delayed for IO interrupt processing, then disable a CPU for a logical processor for IO interrupts. Um, and then of course, the final value is uh, there are customer settings where you have custom X and custom Y. So did you find your CPU enable parameter settings? Once you do, join me in part two of this video series where I will tell you what measurements you need to analyze to tune this parameter and I will give you some recommended values. I'll also explain why this parameter has changed from the 10 comma 30 for the Z13 and before processors and the 5 comma 15 for the Z14 and Z15 and beyond processors. So I'm looking forward to having you listen to part two of this video series. For now, this is Peter Enrico thanking you for watching this video. And if you have not done so already, I hope you consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.